I'm Mandy. I am the unicorn. I'm the mermaid, cotton candy mermaid. <laughs> and um, Pure Love, uh, for those of you who are chiming in for the first time, is an online talk show between a parent and a child, adult child, um, talking about our relationship, talking about the ways in which I raised her. Um, and this uh, talk show comes, um, it's a kind of a spin-off of the Heal Project, which um, the platform of that project is that comprehensive sex education is a tool to ending child sexual abuse. So uh, the ways in which I talk to my daughter, the relationship building and using sex education as a, a, a life skill, really, um, is sort of the model that this talk show is um, kind of born on, right? Uh, and it's not to say that my way of raising a child is the best and the only way it's just one aspect it's just a sherry st uh, sharing storytelling um and just letting folks know about um different ways in which uh parents raise their kids right so today is a, a good topic it's a topic that um amanda mandy uh thought of which i really really like mm -hmm. and it's uh raising a weirdo Right, so when she when she brought that up, I was like, "Wow, oh, this is really interesting." Ways, raising a weirdo. I want to know how you identify being a weirdo, uh, because it brought up like memories of me being a weirdo when I was a kid. Well, for one, I want to say um, weirdo is not a dirty word for me. I don't. I use it in a positive way. Um, there's a lot of terms that people use negatively that I flip and use it for myself as an identifying tool. But um, I consider myself a weirdo because I don't stick to the norm, especially when it comes to like fashion, um, people I hang out with, the lifestyle I live, really? <laughs> <laughs> my beliefs, things like that. I mean, I, um, I've been dyeing my hair for a long time. I've always loved makeup. I've always changed the way I dressed according to how I felt at that time. Like even now, some days I'll be in all black. Sometimes I might be in something really androgynous something really feminine every day is something different um and like sometimes i'll wear green eyebrows and have purple hair or something wear black lipstick pink hair <laughs> so i'm just like just a i guess a creative individual mm -hmm. would be my real uh, expression and that can be in many forms mm. it's interesting that you say mostly around like the way your, the way you express yourself in terms of um, your fashion or gender expression even. Um, I actually thought about it in terms of like when you were younger, how you, um, you, if you had a choice to go outside and play or stay inside and read a book, you would stay in and read a book. I would have to like try to push you Oh yeah, that out, too. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I'm still like that. <laughs> she was like reading really higher level books at a time when people, you know, like people her age were reading stuff uh, on their grade level. So she was interested in a lot of other things. So I could think about that as, you know, weirdo, right? You want to be reading rather than being outside. I still um, do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also uh, maybe weirdo what other people would describe you as that in terms of like um how you i always say like your fire right the way that you um express yourself and give your opinions and things like that like i think sometimes when you're young you kind of hold back a little bit right because you're you're thinking about your peers and what you're gonna pe what people are gonna think about you mm -hmm. um and I, I don't think you held back on stuff <laughs> i think that you were you know, like saying things straight up and people were just like taken aback by that, that <laughs> rawness and that honesty. It was difficult, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. I try. <laughs> so would you say that in your weirdoness as a young person and as an adult, like, 
and and we're talking about this for the first time so when we do these shows we don't um we don't really prep we just kind of talk about it as is so as is so would you say that i was supportive not supportive neutral in in raising you know a weird child <laughs> i think you were very supportive i mean of course you know you like with the being an introvert and stuff like you wanted me to socialize more stuff you always put me in programs let me have sleepovers so it's not you know like you catered to both sides like when i wanted to be by myself or if i wanted to be social um and with hair and stuff like from very young like you've always let me like whatever piercing you know a tattoo my hair clothing like you were always like all right well i guess this is like the phase you're in now or what you're into so let's do that um the only restrictions really were like age appropriate clothing and like if something didn't look good for my complexion or something <laughs> but other than that you know you were pretty supportive through everything that's why i'm able to be who i am now and like be so adamant that i have to stay this way because mm. i'm like i can't be somewhere where i can't be like this right right oh i'm glad i'm glad that i was supportive i was trying to be but sometimes, you know, you never know, right? Because you just kind of um, try to support as best you can. But it's uh, also interesting that you say, like, you know, piercings, tattoos, all that stuff. And I remember the first piercing that you got. Um, it was on your, it was either your, was it your 16th or 15th birthday or something? I think I was just like, it was just a random time. I don't think it was a birthday. I think it was because I remember, I remember it was in the village and when i was doing it the person behind the counter looked at me and said you know this is permanent you know like they were trying to give me some advice about not allowing her because i had to sign I was and i 14. was like yeah, yeah yeah i know maybe that's what it was right you were 14. um and for me i to me those were you know how people say don't sweat the small stuff right to me that was small stuff to me, there was a way that she wanted to express herself, and that was a part of her autonomy and her body, and that I didn't want to, um, you know, like, hinder that. Piercings could come out, you know, those could heal. Um, to me, it's not a big deal, and because she was doing other things in her life that were, you know, she was, she was going to school, she was doing what she needed to do, and she wanted to do that, so it was fine with me. Uh, and even with tattoos, um, you know, I have tattoos. I'm not anti-tattoos. The only thing I told you was like, you know, once this is on you, it's on you. Just make sure it's right. a good one. Yeah. Right. Like think about what you want to put on your body. A little good stuff. artist. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't have so many like rules about those things. I was more concerned about other shit. Like getting a piercing, getting a tattoo. Um, I wanted to have, you know, different kinds of conversations with her and not like be concentrated on those things. Um, and I actually loved like your, when you started putting makeup on, I loved it. I mean, like you were so creative and stuff and it, I saw you shine in those things even now. Like when you do your makeup, when you color your hair, when you you create your own, make your own wigs, like she's so creative. Um, I think it's a part of your art, your yeah, expressiveness, you know, uh, and for me to hinder that, like that love that, you know, I could see it. You're like, oh, I'm making this wig and I'm so excited. You know, I wanted to support that, you know. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, mom. You're welcome. <laughs> like this. I made this. I did this yesterday. <laughs> I love it. I decided to switch it up. And you've never had this color here before, right? I think once a few years ago, but not that long. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, um, and I'm thinking about my weird oldness as a yes. as a young person. You know, and I actually think my it's funny because pe people always ask me, "Are you an introvert or an extrovert?" Both. And yeah, I would say that. I I don't know if I'm an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. I don't know. I know that there are lots of uh, moments where I need my solitude and need to be alone. I think a lot of that is about my mental health stuff. Um, and then there are other times where I love being out in a lot in front of a lot of people, like with the work that I do, like doing public speaking and performing. That feels really comfortable to me. Uh, yeah, so it's like, a, well, I'm always like, I think I'm in the middle with everything. <laughs> um, but. I think my weirdoness as a kid had more to do with, I don't know, I think I struggled a lot with my place in the world. Like, who am I? Yeah. Uh, 
what am I contributing? What is my purpose? I had a lot of like those internal dialogues. Oh questions. god, that was so deep. <laughs> that was so deep as a, as a young person, you know, like really <laughs> contemplating my existence and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> it was yeah, but it, it was so emotional and intense for me growing up. I was really emotional. I was. Um, yeah, just trying to figure myself out. And I also think that a part of it was my survivor stuff, um, grappling with that and not knowing that I was a survivor, that, you know, things were happening to me and stuff. So, yeah, it's um, so I think my weirdness uh, uh, was around that. And also this feeling of no one understanding me. Um, so thinking about you, I didn't want you to feel like no one understood you. I mean, at least I wanted me. Yeah. Like that I was there to understand you no matter what. Um, whether you were writing poetry in the corner, reading, you know, five books and wanting to talk deeply about, you know, the interconnections of, you know, indigenous sovereignty and slavery and the Holocaust. I mean, because this is what we were talking about when you were young, <laughs> you know, um, or whether it's... Um, you know, you having a different fashion sense at the time, you know. And I think that now, you know, you're saying that you're a weirdo, but I think there's a bigger group of weirdos like you. It's more acceptable right? now. Yeah. I'm like, where were you guys when I was younger when people made fun of me for having red hair and, like, wearing fishnets? Like, mm -hmm. I used to get picked on a lot, and now everyone's like, oh, my God. And I'm like, <laughs> great. And, and now I'm at a point where I'm just like, I don't need the approval anymore. I don't mm -hmm. seek it because I'm like, I went through all this time like battling. Like even today, I was still like, oh my God, people are going to look at my hair and they're going to stare at me. Oh my God, they're going to look mm -hmm. at me. Like, what are they going to say? Are they going to laugh at me? And I'm still just like, I still have that fear. But then at the same mm -hmm. time, I'm like, I think it looks great. Yes. Um, and I, I'm still coming to terms with this sometimes and I'm still not as weird as I want to be. I still hold back a little mm. bit because I'm still kind of like, I don't want people to judge me because people will always judge. And it's yeah. worse when it comes from your in-group. Yeah. Um, but I know, especially being a black weirdo is even oh, harder yeah. than being a regular weirdo. <laughs> well, you shouldn't even say regular well, weirdo, right? Being a specific black weirdo is a hard subgroup, uh, is a hard type of weirdo to be, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If Why do you think? Sense. Because I'm like, we already, as a, a, a people, we already have all these lenses on us. And I have a lot of, like, I'm a part of so many, like, subgroups. Mm -hmm. So I'm already, you know, being dissected on a daily basis by any given person. So I'm mm -hmm. like, to do, to try to be different and then, you know, be a scary black woman or something, it's like... People hmm. don't know what to do with me or where to put me or right, right. they wait for me to open my mouth really to see what kind of person I am because they're like, she could really be about anything right now. Right. Like, she has all these tattoos and she has this hair, but then she looks like she's kind of nice, but then she does like makeup. So I don't know if she's feminine right, and right. soft, but I don't So I guess people try to figure me out, but um, I, people are still more accepting now than they were when I was younger. Hmm. And I have a lot more friends who are like me. Mm -hmm. more than when I did when I was younger because everyone was like confused and right, awkward. Right. Do you feel like people um, look at you with like this pink hair or your lipstick or anything like that um, especially as a black woman and think that you're ignorant that you don't have anything to contribute because... I, yeah, definitely do because I mean you see how they I automatically am cut out of a lot of employment opportunities because I don't look professional. Mm. But then I've seen lawyers with blue hair, but they're white, so it's different, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I know people associate bright colored hair with loud, obnoxious people or something, people who are lowbrow. And I'm like, once I speak to you, you're going to understand who I am. And I'm like, this is just an exterior. I mean, this is definitely my interior. Too. Right, right. Like, this is just my exterior and doesn't tell you anything about my experience, my intelligence, mm. my thoughts, anything. And people get really surprised. They're like, wow, I would never guess. And I'm like... All right. Well, people just judge, right? Or, or have you had the other side of it where people say you're trying to be white, right? That was that from... Until the, until the time I was <laughs> maybe 14, I heard that. That's, yeah. I, I figured that's happened when you were younger because there were not, uh, there were not so many out black weirdos that there are right now, you know? And, and I think it's the rise of, like, being a black weirdo, like... Uh, awkward like really owning awkwardness um, also I, I'm thinking about like um, 
and like performers and a lot of artists a lot of black right. weirdo artists are coming up right. now i'm thinking about lil kim back back in the day right because she, she was, was wearing wigs and, and coloring her hair she was dope from the beginning right yeah. and i was like i love that like she is a black she's woman she's a free black woman doing that stuff right so i i appreciated that so there were more people doing that kind of stuff and now giving way to you know that that it's that there are a lot of black weirdos in a lot of different ways. If you see on social media and everything, like I just see the younger generation and they're all like so expressive and it seems like they're so confident and like mm. steadfast in their identities. And I'm like, I wish I was like that when I was younger. And I, they're lucky that they're growing up in this time where they're able to be like, I think I'm a gender fluid unicorn at 10 years old. And someone's like, <laughs> okay, that's cool. Great. Yeah. What, do you, what do you want us to call you? What are your pronouns? You know, like, but when I was younger, they would have been like, shut your ass up. Like, <laughs> go to school, Jeffrey. You know, so I'm like, it's a good time for them. It's a good time for young people to self-express yeah. right now. But I would also say that even though um, they're getting positivity from other people or on social media or something like that, that I would say that there's a, a bigger impact or, or a big impact when it is your own um, family of origin supporting that. Um, yeah, supporting that you can dress the way you like and, and, and you know, and sometimes, um, you know, I think as parents, we think, oh, you're going through a phase. And I don't think I ever thought about, about it in that way. I said, this is how you want to dress, then okay. Um, and we'll talk about that, like what that means and what that looks like and how other people might um, address you or think about you or look at you. Um, so I kind of like thinking about preparing you for what, you know, uh, how people are going to, um, I guess, make assumptions, you know, just make assumptions about you. So it's about preparing. And I wanted to support uh, you in all ways and if later on you decided ah, that was when I was younger I don't feel like doing that to my hair anymore then that's fine but obviously it's a huge part of you because you've been doing this since you were like 12 right? yeah. uh, so. I'm gonna be one of those old ladies with like a purple like a purple fro because like they put that rinse in their hand when it turns white I'm gonna be <laughs> that old lady with purple hair definitely so I, I, go ahead. You want to say I was something? gonna say I also love that mommy and poppy, my grandparents, they also support it too. Like oh, whenever yeah. I go over there with my hair, they're like, "Oh my goodness, buy your mom, man, they like your hair." <laughs> so I'm like, "That's nice." Like I can go to my grandparents, yeah. and they're all like, "You mm -hmm. look beautiful." I'm like, "Oh, thank you." Yeah, and that's cool. Like with a, you know, they're from another generation, but they've always so yeah. I think they've always um, expected this artistic, like beautiful <laughs> expression from you because that's. That's what you exude, and, and I'm glad that I was able to allow that to happen, um, because I think you know sometimes as parents we want to protect our kids, we want you to fit in, yeah. um, and I was Shield just like, from the I don't fit in already, so eh, you know, <laughs> it's not so bad on the other side, right? <laughs> right. So I think uh, on my end, I would say, you know, um, listen, listen to young people because this is. We, I think as adults, we often think of things as phases and maybe it's not. Maybe it's a part of somebody's life. And even even if it's something that's short-lived, it's still a part of their life because it's a journey. They make decisions it's and they experience. could say, uh, I like this or I didn't like this. You can talk about how society sees them. It's more of an interaction than it is a uh, absolute no. Because sometimes, as we all know, that sometimes when you say no without any kind of reasoning um young people or people in general navigate towards that thing even more <laughs> yeah um i would also say that sometimes parents have a disconnect with their kids because they forget that what it once felt like to be that way because mm. it's like once you're in it and you're a kid it's everything yeah. and then once you get past it you move so quickly afterwards life goes comes at you so quickly after your teenage years that you mm. really forget like, damn, I was that 13-year-old kid, like, awkward, right. singing in my room to Britney Spears <laughs> and stuff. And now my daughter's doing the same thing, and I'm getting mad at her for singing Britney Spears. Right. You know, like, right. so you have to really sit back and be like, when I was this age, what kind of kid was I? What was right. I doing? What was my mom telling me that I couldn't do, that I, who I couldn't be, how I couldn't dress, right. and try to apply it accordingly? You know, like... Mm -hmm. You know, you always want the best for your kids, but you still want them to be them. And they will thank you forever for it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that is exactly, I remember being a teenager. I absolutely remember being a teenager and crying about things that my mom wouldn't let me do or my dad wouldn't let me do uh, or things that I was upset about. And I would say to myself over and over this mantra, I was like, when I grow up and I have a child, I will remember this. I will remember this. I will." Re and I did. I remember, and, and even though now as an adult, there were things that you, you know, would get upset about or want, and I was like, oh, inside, I was rolling my eyes, because I was like, this is nothing. When you get older, you're going to realize this means nothing. Yeah. But that doesn't matter, <laughs> because in that moment, it's everything. everything. So I had to remember that for you, it was the entire world. And so I had to acknowledge that, right? I had to do that dealing with kids, too. I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> but then I'm like, all right, you're three. There's nothing else you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I hope that this was helpful. And I hope that um, if parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardians. godparents, guardians, um, listen. You know, sometimes don't sweat the small stuff because um, it's, an, it's always an opportunity to have a better relationship and to understand the journey that you're, the young people are going on. And it's theirs to, to navigate and create. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.